The question is, what is the firm's weighted average cost of capital? And let's see what we are given about the firm. This firm finances its operations by issuing equity and debt. So right away you see that there is no preferred stock in the picture, just common stock or equity and debt. And then we are given two columns. In the first column we have equity information. In the second column we have debt information. Let's see what we know about equity. The firm has 50 million shares, $80 per share, beta equals 1.15, market risk premium equals 9%, risk free rate equals 5%. Um, debt information, $1 billion in outstanding debt. In parentheses, I explained that this is nothing but the total face value of all bonds. Then we know current quote equals 110, coupon rate equals 9%, semi-annual coupons, 15 years to maturity. And we are also given the tax rate for this firm in uh, the amount of 40%. Okay. Let's calculate this firm's weighted average cost of the capital. This is the WAC formula, the weighted average cost of capital formula. Um, on the right, I have like a small image of the previous slide with all the information that's given. So we can kind of look things up. <clears throat> right away, you can cross out the part of the WAC formula related to preferred stock because we don't have any preferred stock. Let's start by calculating RE and RD. RE, cost of equity. <clears throat> Remember from way back when in this chapter, one of the very early slides, we looked at two approaches, two different formulas, depend, and you use the right one based on what you're given. Two different formulas how the cost of equity can be calculated. Um, because we are given the beta, the market risk premium, and the risk free rate, we can use the CAPM approach, the Capital Asset Pricing Model approach, which says to calculate the cost of equity, we take the risk free rate, we add the product of the beta and the difference between the expected return on the market portfolio and the risk free rate. <clears throat> so let's plug in the numbers. The risk free rate is 5%. I put 0 0.05 in decimals. Plus, the beta of the stock is 1.15. So I add 1.15 multiplied by, and then I just put one number, 0 0.09, which is the market risk premium of 9%. And the reason I'm not subtracting the risk free rate, uh, like the CAPM formula says, is because the market risk premium is already the difference between the expected return on the market portfolio and the risk free rate. So 9% that's given to us is the entire term in the parentheses. It's not just ERM, it's ERM minus RF. <clears throat> okay, so the calculations give us 0.1535, which is 15.35%. So 15.35% is what it costs the firm every year to give back to stockholders um, for the money that they provided for the firm. So out of the money that they provided to the firm for its businesses, 15.35% of that needs to go back from the firm every single year. That's the annual cost of equity. Then... Pre-tax cost of debt. Let's do this part of the VAC formula. RD, that's pre-tax cost of debt. It's the same thing as computing IY in a bond problem. Okay, so to compute IY, we need N, the number of coupons, PMT, the coupon amount itself, FV, which is the face value on the bond, and PV, the bond price. What is N? Let's see what we are given. Uh, 15 years to maturity, semi-annual coupons, which means two per year. Over 15 years, 
there will be a total of 30, which is 15 times 2. Next, PMT, that's the coupon. Because of the semi-annual coupons, we need to find the semi-annual coupon amount. Per here, it's coupon rate times 1000. Um, the coupon rate is 9% given. When multiplied by 1000, it gives $90. Then we divide it by 2, which gives $45 per half a year. FV, the future value or the face value is always $1,000, even when it's not given. Just assume it's always $1,000. So I put that. <clears throat> Notice that I'm using both PMT and FV with a positive sign, which means that the present value must be with a negative sign. So what is the present value on each bond? What is the price for each bond? Let's see. Uh, what else do we know about the firm's debt? $1 billion in outstanding debt, which is the same thing as the total face value. Current quote equals 110. That's all we have left to figure out the bond price. <clears throat> Current quote means 110% of the face value. So what's 110% of $1,000? That's $1,100. So I guess a good way to remember uh, the trick uh, to go from current quote, which is how bond prices are um, sort of quoted in the financial world. How to go from the quote to the price, you just add one zero. So 110, if you add one more zero, it becomes 1100. That's the price for each bond. And I use a negative sign for it, otherwise the bond calculations will give me an error. Compute IY, the answer will be 3.927. Because it's per half a year, I will need to multiply that by two to get the annual cost of debt or pre-tax cost of debt, 7.855. <clears throat> Let's um, review the bond uh, calculations in the financial calculator. <clears throat> Let me bring it up. Let me first clear everything from my earlier calculations. Okay, so I have N, which is 30. So I press 30 N. Then my coupon payment every half a year is $45. I put 45 PMT. The face value is always $1,000, so I press 1000 and I save it as FV. And then the bond price is $1,100. I put $1,100, oops, uh, yeah, $1,100. I change the sign to negative by pressing the plus minus key on the bottom. And then I save it by pressing the PV button. Compute IY, 3.93% every half a year. Actually, if I increase the decimal places, I would have gotten a more accurate number, 3.927 when rounded to, to three decimal places. And then you multiply that number by 2 to get 7.854%. Next, let's focus on the weights, the weight of equity weight of, and the weight of debt. Um, we know that the market value of equity is equal to the number of shares times today's price per share. So you take 50 million and multiply by $80 per share, which gives $4 billion. Market value of debt. You would want to do the same thing, the number of bonds times the price per bond. Um, what is the number of bonds? If the total face value is 1 billion and the face value of one bond is 1,000, then there must be 1 million bonds. And the price for each from our last slide was $1,100. So you could multiply 1 million bonds by $1,100 per bond 
Or you could do it a little bit differently. You could use the quote again. So again, the current quote means percentage of the face value. So 110% um, <clears throat> um, 110 of the face value is the market value. And we can do apply the quote to the entire book value, the entire $1 billion. So $1 billion multiplied by 110% quote gives $1.1 billion. That's the market value of that. The sum of the market values gives the market value of the firm. 4 billion plus 1.1 billion equals 5.1 billion. Then we can calculate the weights. The market value, sorry, the weight of equity is 4 billion divided by 5.1 billion, which gives 0.7843 or 78.43%. The weight of debt is 1.1 billion divided by the same total, 5.1 billion, which gives 0.2157 in decimals, or 21.57%. So these are our two weights that will then be used in the weighted average cost of capital formula. <coughs> um, of course, the weight of debt could be calculated slightly differently because there are only two things in the firm's capital structure, and we already know the weight of the first, 78.43%, uh, the weight of equity. We, we can just subtract the weight of equity from a total of 100%, or in decimals, 1 minus 0.7843, which gives 0.2157, the weight of debt in decimals. Okay. So we have just calculated all the components of the WAC formula that needed calculation. Um, the weighted average cost of capital now equals the weight of equity, 0.7843, multiplied by the cost of equity, 0.1525, plus the weight of debt, 0.2157, multiplied by the pre-tax cost of debt, 0.07854, uh, times, in the parenthesis, 1 minus the corporate income tax rate, 1 minus 0 0.40, which is given. This gives us 0 0.1306, or 13.06%, uh, which means overall, considering all the different sources of money for the firm, it costs our firm 13.06% per year, um, <clears throat> to use the money that was provided uh, by the investors into the firm who bought the firm's common stocks and bonds. Let's take one more step, <clears throat> one step further, kind of beyond what this problem asked us to calculate. What we can now say is that if this firm is considering a new investment project, it should accept the project only if it expects to earn no less than a 13.06% return. <clears throat> Otherwise, the project will not be profitable enough and the firm won't have enough money to compensate its investors.